Hello again, my friends. This is Kunita, and I greet you warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God, and I welcome you to Kunita's Ramble. You know, as I sit back and I sometimes look over my life in the aggregate, I often marvel to myself, looking at my life, seeing so many times of barrenness and leanness, actual deadness and carnality, seemingly blossoms to the point that for large periods of my life there was an inability to uh, to form any type of coherent spiritual thought. I seemed to be controlled by those lusts and by the temptations that prey upon them. As I look back, it is astonishing to me now in my old age how he has kept my soul alive and vibrant through all these years through all the ups and the downs we carried on together and yet so secretly did he work upon me so mysteriously and yet Continuously, always did he lead me on, guided and preserved through so many difficulties and obstacles. Oh, my friends, as I know my life is no different than than most, if not all of yours, it is clear that the very walk of a Lamb of God is in itself a miracle of mercy. Sometimes we seem driven, sometimes drawn, sometimes led, and sometimes carried. But in one way or another, the Spirit of God so works upon us that though we scarcely know how, we still press on, press on towards that mark of our high calling. Our very burdens make us groan for deliverance, yet they also make us strong. Our temptations cause us to cry out for help, but yet God's power lives and grows strong within our weakness. The very difficulty and ruggedness of the road make us want to be carried every step. However, the arduousness of our journey and our weariness before the Lord brings the wisdom of God's Spirit into full flower within our hearts. We know this to be true. Remember, my friends, the days of our youth. We ran after our lovers and sold ourselves to them for food, for drink, for acceptance and for a life. We were young, free, and all too natural, and we eagerly chased after the lusts of the flesh, the lusts of the eye and the pride of life. Here were our lovers that gave us our food and drink, that so pleased all of our passions and desires. But the Lord mercifully interposed upon us and within us. For he will not let his children drift so far as they would blindly go or become or become what they otherwise might be. He says, therefore, I will block your path with thorn bushes. Uh, Excuse me. I will block your path with thorn bushes. I will wall you in so that you cannot find your way. 
It is true in our own lives. The Lord in His mercy and His grace prevented our carnal minds from carrying out their desires. He hedged up our way with thorns by which we felt and understood the pricklings of conscience, the stings of remorse, the pangs of guilt and conviction, which were all thorny hedges that fenced up the way of our transgressions, preventing our carnal minds from breaking out into their various paths of ruin and to lead us home, my friends, to our first love. You see, my friends, by the grace of Almighty God, a hedge of thorns has been set around all of His lambs, awake or not. And when our souls are unable to break through this strong fence, because the moment that we sought the moment that we sought to try to get through it or over it, every part of it presented a prickling briar or a sharp and strong thorn which wounded the spirit, pierced the soul, and drove us back home towards our Heavenly Father, where our conscience is not made tender through His Spirit in this way, so as to feel these prickling briars, who knows what might have been the consequence, or into what, what misery our souls may have fallen. And it was in this way that all of us were called into His love. And it has been in this way that all of us has been led for most of our lives. Yet then we were young, in full vigor and strength. We could take on all comers. We had a confidence, a vibrancy about us. Yet now, my friends, we are old, entering into the winter of our years. The friends of our youth are gone. Death or distance has stripped us of them. But our God says, I am He who formed you in the womb. I am He who called you by my grace into fellowship. I am He who gave you my word that I would never leave you nor forsake you. And I am in the same mind still. There is no change within me. You know, as we age, and as we see those aging around us, we notice it a serious temptation among the older population to believe that God has forsaken them as well, because it seems most others have already done so. It is a sad thing to see an aged Lamb of God discouraged by the insensitivity of others. Oh, my friends, if God has arranged our lot, if He has promised us all that is necessary for life and godliness, if He has loved us with an everlasting love, if He has united us to Jesus, if He has redeemed us by the blood of His Son, if He has filled us with His Holy Spirit, if He has pledged in His Word never to leave or forsake us, why then these doubts now? His name has been music in your soul, and His glorious work has been for years the only foundation of your hope. You are, my beloved, safe in Him, and your heart should be at rest and at peace. Yeshua never refuses to receive a soul that He has called, and He never fails to keep those whom He receives. You have known this, and spoken of it for your whole life. You know that He has kept you in time past. You are a proof, my friends, in your very life of His faithfulness right now. Think about these things and know that He will keep you as well to the very end and beyond. He will perfect that which concerns you. His mercy endures forever. 
nor will he forsake the work of his own hands, that which he has loved from the beginnings of eternity. Place your confidence in him and him alone, my friends, and he will keep you in perfect peace. Does not it say in his word, I will be your God throughout your lifetime. Until your hair is white with age, I will be your God. I made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and I will save you. Oh, my beloved, your God will not only carry your burdens, but he will carry you. He carried you like a lamb in his arms when he called you by his grace many years ago. He has carried you, guarded and protected and guided you throughout your whole life. And he will carry you now that you are old. He will never turn away from you. But he rejoices over you with his whole heart, with his whole eternal soul does he sing He will bear you, though you may sometimes feel fretful, feel peevish, feel agitated. Yet he will be with you in the midst of all your infirmities. He will carry you, my friends, not only to the Jordan, but over it as well. You are my fellow aged lambs. Like that mature palm tree with its coronet full of rich and ripe fruit. We, all of us, who have walked a life in the love of our risen Savior, stand as a witness of God's faithfulness, a proof of the power of His grace, and an evidence of the reality of our faith in the risen Lord our risen Savior, Yeshua, Almighty God Himself. The Spirit of God has long dwelt in our hearts. The Word has been thoroughly cultivated within us. And now, my friends, now do the ripe fruits of the Spirit appear upon us. There is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control the things it took a lifetime for us to begin to learn he will not abandon his finished work my friends so as we approach as we approach this finish line of our race as our years come upon us and it comes into view fret not my friends just keep your eyes on Him, have you had, as you have done throughout your life. And know, know that there is a certain rest in the arms of Emmanuel as we cross over that mark. As He has said, our gospel came to you not simply in words, but also with power and with the Holy Spirit and with deep convictions. And these, my friends, will see us all safely home. For we cross, my friends, over the Jordan as one coming up out of the wilderness, leaning. Hello again, my friends. This is... Oh, I guess I had a bit of a problem there. As most of you might have noticed, uh, it was a little bit different than uh, what I had put on the uh, title for the show. Well, as things would happen, uh, I wound up being on a uh, an overly long route with uh, very, very late hours, and I came in uh, after midnight the last couple of nights and uh, had to get up early yesterday morning, so the, the time simply wasn't there. And uh, so I took the opportunity to uh, present a different message. I don't quite know how to uh, change the uh, the forms yet on the show, so uh, have patience with me. I will learn. 
Also, as far as uh, the weekday shows, I do still plan to uh, begin to uh, start some weekday morning shows, but the uh, season and the times and, and the driving that's going to be required with, with the, the holidays coming up and all that may preclude for me, me from actually doing that on a weekly basis until after the first of the year, but we will try and get some going. As I said, have patience with me. All of you who listen to me regularly know that uh, the music I have on the show is always provided by Zepp and Trish Daniel, uh, and it is so today. We opened with uh, Do You Get It? And we will close with, I believe it's Transition Through Spirit is what I uploaded for the show today. Uh, Zepp's music can be found at, uh, I think it's SoundCloud. There we go, SoundCloud slash Zedja. And all of his uh, all of his messages, his podcasts, his written word, and a lot of his music can be found at his main site, which is zepdaniel.com. Podbean.com. Well, my friends, it looks like the uh, with the music coming up, the time is just about run out. So I'm going to go ahead and I will uh, let's see, check the chat room real quick. I don't uh, have several guests in here listening, but I don't have any. Uh, any questions or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and end the show with music from Zeph. Until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely wonderful day in our risen Lord. Goodbye. <laughs>